Welcome back sailors, this is your captain speaking and welcome to Bruise News. So last night we had the UFC event Rose Nemahunez versus Andrade, Jessica Andrade. And once again, I I only predicted three fights or made predictions for three fights instead of doing the whole card because I sort of thought that I would just keep it to the fights that people were really, really interested in. So I only made the three predictions and I ended up getting the first fight correct and the other two wrong. But we will get into that. Super duper frustrating what happened, but I'll uh, speak on that in a moment. <clears throat> so I'm thinking that I might use a few other outlets for people to be able to access my YouTube channel. I'm thinking about possibly starting um, a Facebook group, um, possibly starting a Twitter handle behind this stuff, and maybe even an Instagram. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do I might have stay away from Instagram. I'm not a big fan of it, but Twitter seems like it might be another good resource to take advantage of because I'll be able to sort of get the word out there a little bit better because without the monetization from YouTube, it's tough. And, you know, we're not really pumping out the numbers. Not we. Well, I guess we in a way. I'm not really getting the numbers that I think I could be getting to. Um, and I need to start um, sending the videos other places. Like, I do tend to post them to everybody's, um, through everybody's messenger so they watch. But I really need people to start seeing it more, not just the people that are close to me. Um, but if I want to get monetized and have people viewing them and get commercials in there and start working at possibly making this into a bigger thing, I have to start pushing it to more areas. So in the next um, few videos, I'll be definitely looking into different ideas, how I want to do things. Facebook group is definitely coming, but I want to make sure that it's really good before I just end up sending it out there so that I won't have to send it through Messenger. There will be a group. The group will be able to be you know, shared, joinable, all that good stuff, and I'm really excited about that. Anyways, getting into the fight, the first fight that we saw on the card that was part of the prediction was um, Volkanovski versus Aldo. Now, I did say that Volkanovski was a beast. He's a He was a really good, accomplished rugby player. He was 16-0 and going into this fight. And Aldo is a guy who's been fighting for a long time, and he's probably at the end of his career. It, it, different from how Volkanovski is at the beginning of his UFC career. Volkanovski uh, went out there and he really took it to Aldo. Uh, there's a few things that, uh, there's a few arguments that I like to make about certain fights, and sometimes it's not necessarily that one fighter won, it's that the other fighter lost. And it's a big thing you have to take a look at, and it might sound silly when you think about it at first, but the truth is that a lot of fights can get separated from that. You look at like Henan Barrow versus Dillashaw, for instance, their first fight. Dillashaw absolutely destroyed Henan Barrow. There was no mistakes that Henan Barrow made. There was nothing he could have done. Dillashaw went out there and he absolutely slaughtered him. Now, that's not to say that the PEDs didn't help because he was probably using PEDs back then because even Joe Rogan said that was the best performance that anybody has ever put on inside the octagon, and a lot of people would agree. It was almost like day and night watching uh, Dillashaw from The Ultimate Fighter getting KO'd, and... <clears throat> that Dillashaw that we saw in that fight for the title. It was almost scary how different it was. Anyways, going back to the fight, um, Volkanovski did very well at neutralizing Aldo's attacks. He took the hard shots from Aldo that Aldo likes to throw, but Aldo really was tentative, and it's just one of those things. About five, six years ago, Aldo would absolutely exterminate anybody that got into there. He, Anybody that was in the cage, he would try to obliterate them. He would throw nasty leg kicks, body shots, head shots. He'd be thrown for the head and he was so fast and so vicious. He'd be trying to hit you every single time you got in range of him. And now he just seems like a guy who really isn't He's not, he's not really, he doesn't have the killer instinct that he used to. And I don't know if that's because of his old age or he just doesn't have the same love for MMA anymore. You know, some of the drama that he's gone through could be a factor. But Volkanovski fought a good fight and he kept off of Aldo when Aldo was trying to, you know, take his head off. And that's how it goes. When you don't throw enough strikes and you're not throwing combos, you can't set up the power shots and you're not going to knock anybody out. You just It's very rare for two pros to go in there and one pro to just knock 
everybody out without setting up punches. Like you look at Connor and how good he is at striking. You look at, you know, how good a lot of these guys are. Anderson Silva, he didn't knock people out with one shot. He well, he did, but he he was setting it up and his accuracy was top notch. But a lot of the times when you see these top level guys, they're setting up their shots for later. And once the shot is set up, that's when you land the knockout. Uh, moving on to the next fight, we had Cannoneer versus Anderson Silva. Now, this is the first part of a, of a heartbreaking night. Usually when your heart breaks, it breaks in two pieces. Well, both of my hearts, both of my hearts, my heart broke and then broke and then crumbled and it was, it was just terrible. Anyways, Anderson was looking great in this fight, but immediately he was doing what Anderson does and he wasn't checking the leg kicks. And eventually Cannoneer just landed a nice inside leg kick right to the right leg, which is the one that he snapped in half against Weidman. And he dropped, and it was it was over. He was in agonizing pain. To me, it seemed a little bit played out, almost like it wasn't as painful as he as it was. But I really don't believe that Anderson would fake an injury or anything like that. Like that, just it's a stupid thing, you know. It's a stupid thing, and he loves fighting, and I think that he was going out there to have fun. But for a veteran like him to go out there and not check leg kicks and to hold your chin up high and your arms down low like he always does is just silly against a guy especially Cannoneer who was able to knock out guys at light heavyweight I think it was a silly move to add Anderson apparently at the end of the fight when they were talking to both fighters Cannoneer was really pissed you couldn't hear anything the Brazil crowd was booing Cannoneer into dust like you couldn't even when Cannoneer was speaking on the microphone you could not hear him at all it was unbelievable Anyways, when they spoke to Andy after the fight, Anderson said that he had the the injury on the right on the right knee before the fight even happened. So I mean, maybe it was his bad decision to not, you know, get out of there and not fight or cancel the fight. But he's getting old. He's forty four now or forty five. So I mean, maybe it was his choice to not, or maybe it would have been a better choice to maybe just call that one and come back when you're, you know, healthier. Especially a guy at his age, he needs to go in there at least healthier and not going in with a severe injury. Then ended up, possibly, that could be the end of Anderson Silva at this point. Here we go. So, the main event, Rose Namajunas versus Jessica Andrade. Um, I was really nervous for this fight. Mostly because I love Rose as a fighter. She's so good and she's just a good a decent human being and you just love to watch her and what she did to you Jacek and how she took out that cocky girl and absolutely decimated her and the whole thing behind Rose like she's just one of those humble smart big hard big hearted people and the fight was it was it was scary to watch because you know that Jessica Andrade has a lot of power and there was that chance for her landing those those big hooks that could end the fight but it did not end that way <clears throat> um rose came out there and was absolutely destroying on jessica andrage she was absolutely just teeing off on her andrage had nothing for it It looked like a rookie versus a pro and rose was the pro and she was landing shots everywhere she was making andrage miss she was tagging her just over and over and over and she had andrage bleeding at the end of the first round and just absolutely decimated her now there was one point in the first round where andrage shot for a takedown and when she shot for a takedown um rose went scooped up for the Kimura lock now the Kimura lock is a good way to stuff a takedown because when you lock the arm they're not able to lift with their hips anymore because you're stopping the hip from being able to drive it's almost like um, putting like like a wrench into two gears that are trying to spin right so when she did that that's supposed to stop you from being able to land the takedown but Andrade was so strong that she was able to just use her legs and her back muscles and just pick rose right off the ground and just hucked her off so it was pretty crazy um, but it didn't seem like it was going to be that effective and when it first happened they they actually i'm wrong okay i'm actually wrong um when she picked her up and kind of hucked her off her back rose actually held on to the kimura the first time 
and um, she held onto the Kimura and she transitioned into an arm bar, a really, really nice arm bar, but Rose didn't have it very well and she kicked her off. They stood back up and Rose kept teeing off on her. So I'm sorry for the misinformation there. That is how that went. I just had to phew, think about it again. <clears throat> Anyways, so the second round comes up <clears throat> and Rose gets in there and she's tagging. She's tagging on Drudge, but you can tell that something's a little bit off with Rose almost immediately, just from the first round to the second round. It looks like Rose is a little bit lazier, like she's not, you know, kind of putting as much effort into everything, and she's throwing, but it's not as um, as powerful, I guess you'd say. Like, it, it just, everything she was throwing was lazier, but she was still winning. She was still kicking on Drodge's butt at this point. She was still outlanding her. She's still avoiding all the punches. She was still avoiding all the kicks. She was blocking everything. She was tagging her up every chance that she got. And then the situ situation came up again, where Andrade shot for a takedown, and Rose locked up the Kimura lock. And once again, Rose was lifted off of the ground. And she lifted her off the ground, and she literally just hucked her backwards. And when she hucked her backwards from picking her up that way, Rose landed right on her neck sideways, like right, almost like this, right on her head. If my fingers were her head, boom. Her neck and her head were all twisted underneath her body, and she got knocked out immediately. Now, <clears throat> I was already upset at a buddy because he's like, oh, I think that Andrade is going to win. No, okay, like... <laughs> Andrade may have won the fight, but it did not look that way. It was definitely a fight that, <clears throat> that um, if if you were a, a a smart, if you were watching the fight, you would. It was not that things are are lucky in MMA, but it was just one of those situations where it was like, hmm, I don't think that Andrade really won that fight. I think that Rose lost that fight. And I think that Rose, I felt like she wasn't all there. And I'll get to that in more in a moment. She knocked her out. Andrade won the title. Kudos to her. I wouldn't be super happy about that win. But at the same time, you know, you just won the title. I would be more upset with the fact that Rose, after the fight, had said that a huge weight was lifted off her shoulders now that she's lost the title. And she went into the uh, post the post-fight interviews. And um, she had said they had like a nine-minute interview with her um, outside once everybody's done. And they asked her if she was injured. And she's like, no, everything's fine. And they asked her about what she meant behind it. And Rose basically said that she doesn't have the same will to fight that she used to. She doesn't think that she wants to compete. There's a lot of pressure. Um, that Connor, the thing that happened with Connor with the dolly, she was actually one of the people on the bus. And it affected her mentally in a very negative way where she was having anti-social issues where she wasn't wanting to be around groups of people you know because there was like 50 dudes who rushed that bus in the stadium and not a lot of people knew that they just thought they saw connor but it was a gigantic group of thugs that essentially assaulted the bus and it really had a bad effect on rose and you know no one's to judge and it's it's not about like oh why would that affect you you're a fighter like it's not about that you're you're not her you know, I'm not you and you're not me. So I don't understand how you feel and it's not my place to tell you how to feel. Yeah, there are some things that are definitely ridiculous in those situations, but this one isn't one of them. It's something that affected her bad and you have to, you know, let her deal with it in her own way. And in her own way, I think that a lot of these things have taken a toll on Rose and she's only 26 years old or 24 years old. So she's definitely 26 years old. Definitely. Because if she was 24, she would have won the title and been the youngest champion that the UFC's had. Anyways, <clears throat> she's very young still. She still has a lot of learning. She she won that fight. She was winning that fight. She was going to win that fight. But she even admitted that she got lazy in the second round and she felt like she didn't have it anymore. When she keyed up the Kimura lock, she said that she essentially just, just let it go and was just holding on to the Kimura both, or the, the second time. So Andrade definitely would have felt that and just slammed away at her at her will because the, the, the first one to the second one went completely different the way that she landed and was slammed and all that stuff. So again, it's not to say that Andrade isn't a good fighter. In fact, going in, Vegas had her as the favorite. But watching the fight, they totally had it wrong. Rose was absolutely destroying Andrade. And 
she probably would have continued all the way throughout the fight destroying her if she didn't get lazy and allow that to happen. She let her 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 men, her mentality beat her. You know, she she let her mind beat her body and not the other way around. And that's really upsetting to see because Rose is a phenomenal fighter and I hope that whatever she ends up doing, whether it's MMA, whether it's anything else in this life, I hope that she does very well and that fight is a good lesson about life and how you should act moving forward in everything that you do. You know, if you want to do something, you have to put 100% effort in it. And if you don't want to do something, don't. Just don't. Because you can end up losing more than just, you know, your head. That's the way it goes sometimes. Anyways, I want to appreciate... I want to appreciate... Definitely. Definitely, definitely. Um, I want to say thanks to everyone for watching the video this... 16 minute long video I, I always want to get a better idea of narrowing down my videos and not you know just droning on about nonsense but i talk too much sometimes anyways <clears throat> i hope this video was informative i hope that it gave you the answers and the ideas and all that stuff that you wanted to hear out of this stuff i hope that um you it shed some light on the situation that had happened with rose and the rest of the fights um i definitely need to work on my predictions better maybe the next time i'll try like a reverse or instead of predicting all the fighters that I want to win, I'll predict everybody I want to lose. And then those people, when they lose, it'll actually be the people I want to win. We'll see if it works that way, because it will be really weird if it does. Anyways, I want to thank everyone again for watching. Please like the video, please share the video, and please subscribe if you haven't. Everyone have a great day.